Well, with Nate's doctor, I mean, with Nate's daughter, I, um, she knew uh, that something was up because he has one daughter that's, that he's close to. So I told her, yeah, I did call her and tell her that uh, we, he was going to be tested. She wanted to be here for the initial one, so she was here for uh, when, when Gwen came by for the initial testing. And uh, she wanted to, you know, she wants to be informed of, of everything, you know, all of the, the appointments and things like that. But with, and with his church, I did, I talked to his pastor and then I sent them a letter too. And um, I haven't sent out emails to other people, but I think things get around through word of mouth. Mm. But um, and with with mother, we uh, we have our our family. We have monthly meetings, so we discuss things uh, like that. Uh, when when they were when my parents were alive, um, they were here with me, and my brother Anthony. He would take. Well, after my father died, um, he would take mother once a month on the weekend mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, give me a break. And my sister that lives here now, she would she would come up on every Thursday so that I could. Sometimes I wouldn't leave the house at all. I would just go in the back room and and close the door <laughs> and just read or, you know, just sit, sit there and stare or, or sleep because you're it's a 24-hour job you have to be on because you hear about uh, people walking you know leaving the walking out of the house and so you're just kind of sleeping with one eye open all the time and and sometimes um, uh, in the last days uh, mother would get up and fall so um, that's you're just always on guard so uh, I just try to tell people things and you know give them the information and and share share it with and you know since I've been sharing it with the with the people at my church people have been coming up to me telling me that they have people who who um, you know and I took uh, his car I took it in recently to to be serviced and I asked the the guy if he would check underneath because I know there was there was a lot of accidents and jumping curbs and and uh, the insurance company fixed some things but um, they didn't want to fix everything because they know that you know he has dementia so the guy said um, not only did he tell me that everything looked okay under the car he told me that when he was 29 he took care of his grandfather who was 91 and he told me his experiences so I think the more you tell people your experience the more they they open up and say, "Oh, you know, I have the same experience. Oh, oh what can I do?" You know, so uh, I think people are very open, but they still. Um, one of the problems that I have is is people always wanted me to be on a committee or do something, and I have to be strong and say, "No, I can't do that. I'm a caregiver." I say it all, and even with me having surgery, <laughs> I went back to church on Sunday, and. Um, after being off for a month, and they're already talking about, oh, you can do this and you can do that. Uh, I'm learning to say no. I'm learning to say no. And I have to pick the things that, that I still want to do. Because people, they don't understand. Just because you look fine, that doesn't mean that you're fine. Mm 